Leniency programs are important antitrust instruments which grant a fine reduction or immunity from fines to cartel members who report a cartel or cooperate with a cartel investigation. The theoretical research has highlighted the strong potential for well-designed and well-managed leniency programs to increase social welfare. However, it has also highlighted the risk that badly managed or badly implemented leniency programs can have the opposite effect. An overly generous leniency program offering fine reductions to several repeat offenders or to several cartel members, in many cases all the cartel members, might make a competition authority appear very successful in terms of the number of con convictions while decreasing social welfare because it decreases de both deterrence and it increases prosecution costs. In my view, the current EU leniency program faces three main challenges. The first being leniency inflation, then whether cartel members can play the leniency game and use the leniency program in their own advantage, and finally the interplay between private and public antitrust enforcement. So going to the first challenge of leniency inflation, what I mean by this is this phenomenon that the share of cartel members who receive a leniency program related reduction has been increasing over time and so has the average leniency program reduction. In fact, about 52% of all cartel members fined since the leniency program has been in place have received some share of a leniency reduction. In addition, 38% of these firms who received a leniency program reduction have also been fined in the US, which suggests that EU leniency programs as currently implemented are more generous than they need to be. In addition, there's no criminal penalties in Europe. There are no revealed preferences in the sense that there's no evidence that shareholders punish the CEOs and high managers for collusive behavior. And there are settlements which grant an additional 10% of fine reduction. So since the strong distortive effect of non-deterrent fines has been shown in the literature, this means that leniency inflation seems to be an attempt to solve a problem of low deterrence and many cartel cases to be prosecuted, which is worsened rather than solved by overusing leniency. The second challenge is whether cartel members can play this leniency game. Currently, there are 110 multiple offenders. The first issue with looking at whether firms can play the game is how to define multiple offenders or repeat offenders. So if you think of any firms who have participated in at least two cartels, we currently have 110 of these firms in Europe. So there's some, also some evidence which suggests that firms can use the leniency program to sustain multi-market collusion. They can use multi-market contact to spread collusive behavior. They can coordinate leniency program applications and they are more likely to be the first reporting firm and to receive a higher leniency reduction. Two less negative notes are that first there might be a cultural effect. So it might be that it's not just firms playing the leniency game. And this is suggested because 22% of the current 110 multiple offenders in Europe are Japanese firms. And traditionally, cartels were um, incentivized in Japan because traditionally firms were organized in groups called the Karetsu. The second less negative note is that hopefully some of these multiple reports are CEOs or are the firms trying to clean up collusive behavior. The third challenge is the interplay between public and private antitrust damage. Often in the legal debate, it has been taken for granted that there's a conflict between the correct functioning of a leniency program and the right of victims to be compensated for damages. In fact, it has been shown that cartel damages or damage claims can actually improve the functioning of the leniency program if the immunity recipient, so the first reporting firm, also gets immunity on civil grounds and if all the leniency program documents are available for damage claims. The recently implemented EU directive on damages makes this a little bit difficult because it does limit the liability of the re immunity recipient or the leniency recipient but it prevents access to all the leniency program documents. So this means that damage claims will be informationally very poor, making leniency and settlements very attractive, but making damage claims very difficult. So to conclude, the risk is that we end up with many cartels, so low deterrence, and many cases to be prosecuted, so high prosecution and high litigation costs, so this means that there's a pressing need to fix these issues. And by this, I mean decreasing the generosity of the leniency program, so getting rid of leniency inflation. Secondly, making fines harsher. So this might include 
the introduction of criminal penalties in the EU, and thirdly, facilitating damage claims. Thank you.